Hey everybody and welcome to Chairman of the Board. Today I'm talking about Riverboat by Michael Kiesling. Now this is a 2017 release for two to four players. It takes about an hour and a half to play. Um, it's a Euro game where you're trying to get as most points as possible and the theme is kind of set in um, New Orleans. You're trying to um, kind of plant crops and sow those or reap the rewards by selling those crops and getting points in kind of loads of different ways. Um, the game is probably on the l lighter end of the medium scale. Um, there's quite a lot going on in the game though but I think it's broken down quite nicely so it's quite easy to teach and to um, explain the rules. Um, so the game, as I said, the game is uh, broken up into five very distinct phases and um, you know, each, each or kind of judging those phases on their individual merits is very, very simple. But before you go into those phases, you're going to have a draft. And that draft is going to be important because and you're going to have a tile representing each of those different phases. And depending on which ones you draft, you're going to get kind of priority in, um, in the relevant stage. Um, or phase and also you're going to get an additional bonus as well so um, before you get started you're going to have that little draft and decide maybe what you're going to uh, you know really need to get in there first on. Um, so the first phase of the game is you're going to draw basically blindly from this um, deck of cards and each of those deck of cards or each card is going to have a certain terrain type and it's going to relate to a certain terrain type on your individual player board and then almost like a roll and write style game you're going to take one of your farmer workers and put them on one of these spots matching that terrain. And the idea of this is important because you're trying to um, maybe get them in little groups so you can kind of prepare for the second phase, which I'll go into a second. And um, there are also kind of wild ones in there where you can kind of put them anywhere. And um, and basically that's, that's the phase. The next phase is where you are basically drafting these different crop types from this um, communal board. Um, you're trying to get them in kind of groups or you get more points if you get them the bigger tiles, which get you kind of two or one point, depending on how big that tile is. So that's why it's important to have them all together. But you're also trying to line them up for different reasons because there are kind of different scoring opportunities you can get such as the wells which um, score you points depending on if you kind of surround the well with a certain crop type or the um, sorry that's the um, the barns but the wells are the ones that let you um, kind of uh, get points depending on how long of a certain continuous line of a crop type is so again you're trying to kind of commit to a kind of spatial puzzle, trying to get long lines of crops, trying to fill in um, certain patches of terrain because you're going to get bonus points at the end of the game if you do, and, um, and so on. And then in the third phase, you're going to go on to the kind of phase where you're going to sell your crops by pulling off your workers on each of those crop types you've just sown. And um, depending on how many of a certain type you've done, uh, you're going to get a certain kind of uh, reward tile. And you're going to take the corresponding boat, which is going to give you a bonus and, and potential points. Um, and then you're going to put them on your individual player board, which is going to be important because you basically have this harbour, which you're going to have to try and move your little um, harbour master around. And the further you get on the track, the more points you're going to accumulate throughout the game, or you're going to kind of unlock. And the person who's furthest along that track is going to get all those points, where anybody else is only going to get half of those points. So there's almost kind of like a, a time track kind of mechanism, similar to Hawaii, if you're familiar with that game. Um, but I quite like that mechanism. There's a good tension to it. And um, the race is quite... Um, you know, the tension of the race is there. Um, so after you've done the, um, you know, the, 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 the kind of roll and write part, you've done the drafting part, you've um, you sold your crops and got the rewards, you are then going to go on to opportunity cards. And those opportunity cards are important because ultimately that's going to be how you're going to score the majority of your points. But the cool thing about this game that's very different to most other games is when you pick up those scoring cards, um, you don't actually just get the reward straight away or at the end of the game. You actually still have to kind of commit something to it in order to score it. Hence the word opportunity because it's just a, an opportunity of scoring. So um, they're going to have loads of different ways you're going to score such as having um, you know X amount of a certain type of crop or having um, one type of each crop or maybe scoring five points for each well you've got or for each kind of barn you have or for coins for a certain amount of money you have. So all the different kind of currencies and tracks and stuff um, you're going to score points on um, based on those opportunity cards. And then the final phase is going to be when you're going to actually commit your, um, I believe they're called surveyors, to a scoring opportunity. And uh, depending on the phase of the game, um, depends on how many kind of these surveyors you can place down. So there's this real kind of tension to it because you're going to have to decide whether you're going to commit these surveyors now and score these opportunity cards 
um, when potentially you're going to have more points to grab down the line or um, you know or wait until um, you know you're going to get bigger rewards but you could potentially run out of surveyors so I quite like that idea it's very kind of different it's a kind of different feel of the game and how to score and it's quite enjoyable um, money in this game is very important because um, it's going to give you a lot of mitigation so for example um, in the initial round when you're drawing those terrain cards you can if you don't like that certain terrain type you can pay a coin and you can put any terrain type of your choice down or um, if you if you in the second phase you can kind of go through the discard pile or the, or the kind of general pool of tiles so you're not just subject to what's on the board um, you can use them to snap up those boat tiles which uh, have already been taken because normally there's only one per player um, or one per kind of um, numerical value and you know if, you, if someone goes there before you do you're going to be out of luck so having more money at your disposal is going to mitigate that kind of becoming last in the player order um, which is obviously subject to the draft um, and, and so on so yeah you've got all these different things to worry about Additionally, there's a, an element of um, area control because at the end of every round, you're going to score for how many workers are in New Orleans. Um, and that's important because you're going to dedicate your, your kind of farmers, which are obviously important in the earlier rounds, to New Orleans, which are basically going to be dead workers for the end of the game. But they score on a kind of cumulative value based kind of method um, at the end of each phase. So say I had two workers in there at the end of phase one, I'll score two points. And then I snuck another two in there for the next round, then I'll score four points and so on. And at the end of the game, you're also going to score um, majority bonuses, which can be quite significant. So yeah, that's basically the gist of the game. You're going to be trying to get your um, your harbour master as far as you can, get as many points as you can through the um, through the opportunity tiles and stuff like that. And um, basically trying to do that spatial puzzle by getting your longest chains and um, your barns surrounding the um, the crops surrounding the barns. So yeah, that's that's the gist of the game. So there's quite a lot going on here, as you can probably tell, but the decisions are not overbearing whatsoever. I think it's always generally pretty obvious on what you should do um, based on the kind of opportunity tiles available, um, on the crops available and stuff like that. But this spatial puzzle is quite nice. Um, I quite like, quite like the roll and write kind of feel to it. It's very kind of relaxing and quite therapeutic. Um, the different strategies seem very well balanced. Um, and stuff like that there's the mechanisms flow very nicely because as i said there's a lot going on but the way it's um, divided down into those um, five very simple phases it just it's just a nice kind of digestible way that the designers kind of put that across and um, you know Kiesling is he, he's been around for um, he's probably been designing games longer than i've been alive so he's um you know he's a master at what he does and um, it's quite apparent that he knows what he's doing with this game um it's very well designed um Time-wise, I think the game has a good timestamp on it. The hour and a half is about right. It doesn't feel like it drags and stay, uh, stays as welcome at all. Um, so that's quite nice. And the uptime as well is, is very nice because, again, that, that when you're drawing the terrain cards, everybody's involved. The drafting is nice and quick. Um, you can kind of score your, your surveyors at the same time. So there's kind of a lot of um, simultaneous play. And it's just not really a lot of opportunity to lose interest. Um, visual design is very clear. It has that nice kind of Clemens Franz art, which is synonymous with Euro games, and it works well with this one. I can kind of see why the visual appeal would maybe fly under the radar and not instantly grab someone's eye. I mean, the name Riverboat itself isn't particularly captivating, but you know, if you like Euro games, I can see why this one's got a bit of a charm to it. And I do like the way it looks, and the symbology is good, and just the general art is, is quite nice. Um, one concern I have with the game is replayability. Because of the kind of mitigating factors you can get with the money, um, you kind of pretty much see all the opportunity cards you, you can get in the game um, quite quickly. And there's not like a huge array of them. So I think every game is going to feel relatively similar, um, which is, you know, it's not a huge knock, but I think the, the, the kind of hook to keep you going back and back again to this one is not quite as strong as I would like it to be. Component quality themselves, absolutely fine, no complaints whatsoever. And the setup and teardown time is, is fine. There's a lot of tiles and stuff, but still proportionate to the game and um, certainly not overbearing. So yeah, overall, um, this is it's a very pleasant game. I do like the way this one plays. It's nice and smooth. Um, again, clearly well thought of and well planned and streamlined to a, to a good degree. Um, I said, biggest concern is that there's not got that big hook to come back to it time and time again, but the plays I ha have had of the game, I thoroughly enjoyed and I can say without a question that this game is hugely underrated. Um, not in terms of how people rate it, in terms of how good it is, 
but because it's flown so far under the radar and not that many people have played it. I mean, it's a rock solid game by a rock solid designer and um, you know, one of the, probably one of the best games of 2017 to be fair. So this is definitely one to check out if you want your kind of hidden gem Euro game. Um, again, it's, it's very, um, you know, the competitive edge isn't extremely strong with this one. You know, if you don't want that kind of cutthroat mentality, this one's a good one. You've got a lot of different methods going into it. As I said, you've got the area control, you've got the drafting, you've got the kind of roll and write aspect to it. You've got, um, you know, the unique way of scoring. So there is enough unique going on in this one. I, I particularly like the tension of the track. Um, when you're trying to get your harbour master as far as you can, past all those different boats to score as many points as you can. So yeah, there's enough going on in this one to keep it very engaging. Um, and yeah, it's it's a, a very, very well designed game. So uh, I do recommend this one. Um, it gets about a 7.3 out of 10 for me, which is a, a very good rating. So uh, a good, a very good verdict, I should say. So yeah, definitely check this one out if you like um, Michael Kiesling games. I think this is probably my favorite game of his that he's designed on his own. Um, I generally like all his games he designs with Wolfgang Kramer. But um, yeah, on, on his individual merit, this one is definitely my favorite game that he's designed. So yeah, that's a, a big kind of, um, you yeah, know, a big kind of credit to, to his ability because it is a, it's a fantastic game. So uh, if you have enjoyed this review, please hit like and subscribe to the channel and check out my other videos too. For everyone else, I'll see you next time on Chairman of the Board. Bye.